promises of God today. Come on, His promises are yes and amen. So let's receive them today, because it's for you. So come on, let's sing this out together. Let's take Him at His word. a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. Come on, it's narrow. It's a narrow road, but the mercy's wide, because you're good on your
Jesus, that you're good on your word. You're good on your promise. Your promises are yes and amen, Lord. So we stand on those promises. We declare those words. And we thank you that you will always come through. That you never fail us and you never will. Thank you that you bless every single person that is connected with us right now, every single person in church right now. Just thank you that you are doing something new. You're doing something good. And so we trust you. We expect it. We receive it. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, you received that today? Come on. So thankful to be in the house. So thankful to be loved by God. So thankful to be in his presence. No better place. Come on. Everything on purpose And I can feel your spirit stirring I've been praying, you've been working You're working it all for good So fan the flame and keep it burning Finding in the furnace And all the waiting will be worth it Cause you're working it all for good Yeah Miracle after miracle Open door after open door Here it comes So get ready for another one Cause another one is on wind and living water. Rushing wind and living water. You're the God of signs. Come on. You're the God of signs and God of wonders. Yeah. And if you will, it work can stop it. Cause you're working it all.
Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today at Life Changers Church Online. It is truly a privilege to get to worship with you. Whether you join us regularly or this is your first time with us, man, I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, we'd love to know that you're here today. And so, man, get in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We got people watching all over the world, being a part of Church Online. It's amazing. We'd love to know where you're from and where you're joining us from today. And I also want to invite all of us right now to take part in the next moment of our worship experience as we come together and give in our tithes and offerings. Uh, you know, the thing I love about Life Changers is this is not a ritualistic church. You know, if you've been coming here for a while, you know, we don't do things out of obligation because we have to. We do things from a place of freedom because of the grace of God. But we also don't see God's grace as an excuse not to do things like giving. It's actually because of the grace of God that we give. And here's what I mean by this. If you look at Ephesians 2, it says, it's by grace that we have been saved. When I realize how little I've done to save myself and how much God has done to save me, I, I'm blown away. I realize that God did all the giving, He did all the saving, He did all the work, and He is so much more in control than I am. So he's the one that deserves my offering. He's the one that deserves my first and my best. What I have is so much better in his hands than it is in my hands. I mean, if I didn't save myself, I can't sustain myself. So I'm putting my sustenance back in the hands of my sustainer. And this is what causes me to be a cheerful giver. This is what gets me excited about giving because man, I'm so at peace knowing that God is the one that provides. God is the one that supplies. And so that gives me freedom, that gives me peace as I give. I hope this does the same for you and encourages you as you give. I wanna invite you right now to give in this moment. You can follow the prompts uh, on the screen or you can click the link that's in the chat. You can also set up recurring giving, which is my favorite way to give. That way it's, it's automatic and you can continue to faithfully trust God with your giving. And uh, man, join me in this moment of generosity and faithfulness with our finances. I'd love to pray for you as we give. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity we have to sow into your kingdom, into your house. Pray that you would multiply this seed for every person that's giving right now. Thank you, your multiplication power is working and you are gonna continue to provide, protect, save, restore. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you so much for giving today. And right now we are gonna go hear a brand new message from Pastor Gregory Dickow. He is continuing his talk from a few weeks ago, all about the total access that we have to the throne of God's grace. It's gonna be amazing. Check it out. Welcome once again to Life Changers International Church and on this beautiful Sunday. I wanna just welcome you home. I wanna welcome you to a church family where Love never fails where we'll teach you how to experience the love of God like you've never experienced before. We'll love you unconditionally. We'll teach you uncompromisingly the goodness of God from the word of God. And we'll encourage you unceasingly. If you don't have a church home, make this your church home today. You can join our church home online globally around the world. Lifechangerschurch.com slash global. And you can participate and partake and give and receive all that God has for you as a church member globally if you don't have a church family. We began talking about how we have access to the throne of God's grace, access. You know, so many people enjoy access to backstage of a concert, access to a, a, a credit card, access to a, a bank account, access to places that are special and only a few are allowed, but we have access and all are allowed who are washed by the blood of Jesus. All are allowed to have access to the throne of God's grace, where we receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. And I want you to to be equipped and armed to know how to boldly go to the throne of God's grace, boldly obtain the mercy that we need, the mercy that we need for the judgment we deserve. But God gives us mercy instead and the power and ability that we don't deserve. God gives us grace instead. And there's a boatload, a truckload, oh, a universe load of grace and mercy available to you whenever 
you have need. We talked about last time I I had to stop before I could get to the to all of these. But we talked about when you understand God's mercy, it's free through the blood of Jesus. You can boldly go to the throne of his grace. You can receive mercy and grace in your time of need. You can receive healing from pain. You can receive the power to hear the voice of God. And we didn't go over this verse, but you can hear the voice of God. Do you know that right now you can hear the voice of God? Now, I know that there are abuses and extreme, you know, uh, fake voices that we try to believe or claim that that are God's voice. But God's voice always starts with love. God's voice always starts with mercy. God's voice always starts with goodness and kindness, not judgment. And but we can hear God's voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. We're his sheep. We can hear his voice. God is our father. We're his kids. Can your kids hear your voice? Could you hear your parents voice? Well, God is our parent and we can hear his voice. I love this scripture in numbers because of mercy. We can hear his voice. Numbers, chapter seven, verse eighty nine. And when Moses went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the ark of the covenant or the ark of the testament from between the two cherubim and it spoke to him. He heard the voice from the mercy seat. He heard the voice of the Lord from the mercy seat and it spoke to him. God will speak to you when you come to him based on the 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 benefit of mercy, based on the equity of mercy, based on the currency of mercy based on the grounds of mercy. On what grounds do you come? God's not like the Wizard of Oz. You have no right to come. (laughs) Whatever people needed from the wizard, which he couldn't give them anyway, they already had. Look, we have access on the grounds of mercy. We can go to God and we can hear his voice. And on the grounds of mercy, we can have intimacy with God. I love what he says in Exodus chapter twenty five, verse 22. And I'll read this to you. Exodus chapter 25, verse 22. It's such a beautiful, beautiful passage of scripture. And it says. There I will meet with you on the mercy seat, he said in verse 21, and you shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark of the covenant where God's presence dwelt in the old covenant in the temple. He said, you shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. There I will meet with you. Where will he meet with us at the mercy seat where the blood of Jesus was shed? The mercy seat is where the priest would go and and sprinkle blood on the mercy seat, which would give access for the priest to be able to go on behalf of the people. Well, Jesus has gone to the throne of God and gone to the mercy seat of God, sprinkled his own blood. And now we can meet with him whenever we want. There's intimacy with God. And I just love this verse. He said, I will speak with you about all that I will give you for the people of Israel. There I shall meet with you. There I shall speak with you. This is living life at the throne of God's grace. So we need to learn how to live at the throne. Where we can go to God anytime, and we also need to learn how to live from the throne from the throne. What does this mean? Because God's not. Causing us or expecting of us to just fight every battle and win the victory. Jesus fought every battle and he won the victory and he gives us the victory. So what we're doing when we say when I talk about living from the throne, I'm talking about living from a place of victory, a place where we're looking down on our problems, not people. We're not looking down. We're not condescending towards people, but we're living from a place of victory. We're not living from a place of defeat where we're trying to obtain the victory. We're living from a place of victory and we're pulling down the lies and the strongholds that are telling us that we don't have the victory. I love what he says in Ephesians chapter two, verse five. And God has made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses. You know, God did something amazing in your life and in my life while we were dead in our sin. While we were dead in our sin, he made us alive 
because of Jesus Christ. And it is by grace that you have been saved. Verse five says and then verse six. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow. He has raised us up and he has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Revelation chapter one, verse five and six, it says through the wash, the washing of the blood of Jesus, we now have, be, have been made kings and priests in the kingdom of God. We've been made kings and priests in the kingdom of God. Romans chapter five, 17 says through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we reign as kings in this life. Boy, you need to start seeing yourself as a king. You need to start seeing yourself as somebody who's living from victory, not living for trying to obtain victory. But we're living from the victory that Jesus has already given us in Christ. Boy, if there's a single truth that must form the basis of our walk with Jesus, it's found in these passages that it is the finished work of Christ. We are not trying to win the victory. We are seated as victors. We are seated as champions. We are seated as more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. We're not trying to work, earn merit or battle our way into the throne room of God. No, the entire message of the gospel is that Jesus Christ has conquered every enemy and won every battle. And if we are in him, all of those victories become ours. Well, if you get a hold of this, your life will be changed forever. The picture of being seated with Christ, Ephesians 2, 6 says this is what I mean by living from a place of victory. This picture of being seated is quite amazing. Can we see rest and completion in that picture? Yes. You see, Christ Jesus sat down after he ascended to heaven. There's more meaning in this than what we can imagine. And if we are in him, we are seated as well. Therefore, we can rest. We're seated. Therefore, we can have confidence. We're seated. Therefore, we can know we have the victory. You know, only one team wins the Super Bowl every year. But after they win the Super Bowl, they have a champion victory parade where they're sitting on a bus with the open, you know, open to the, the streets and they're driving through and all the fans are are cheering and celebrating their team's victory. They believe that they're victorious because their team was victorious. Well, we have something even better than that. Jesus is victorious and he's seated at the throne and we are seated with him. We've been given the same victory that he's been given. He earned it and he gives it to us and shares it with us. We're seated with him. But those athletes after the Super Bowl, they're not trying to score when they're on the bus. They're not trying to win the game when they're on the bus. When they're on the bus, they're seated on the bus because they won, because they have the victory. Take a seat and know that you have the victory in Christ. Boy, Revelation chapter three, verse 11 really speaks to me about this. Jesus says something very powerful that there's so much meaning in this passage. But for today, I just want to share with you that Jesus says, I'm coming quickly in Revelation chapter three, verse one. I'm coming quickly. It doesn't mean necessarily that he's coming soon in a few moments. Quickly is the the manner in which he will come. It will be it will happen quickly when it happens. It will be so fast in the twinkling of an eye. The Bible describes it. But he says. I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have so that no one takes your crown. He says, hold fast to what you have. What do we have? We have what he gave us. What did he give us? He gave us the victory. He made us more than conquerors. He seated us with Christ in heavenly places. He blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places that we bring into earthly places when we pray and when we ask and when we receive by faith all that's been paid for through the blood of Jesus. He's given us a crown. He's made us more than conquerors. He's given us a crown of royalty. He's given us a crown of victory. And he says to us, let no one take your crown. He said, hold fast to what you have. What, what do you have? You have what he gave you, the finished work of the cross and all the benefits and all the blessings that come with Jesus finished work on the cross that gives all the glory to him. 
when we talk about these things. Jesus said, let no one take your crown. Hold fast to what you have. Hold on to it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Don't let anyone tell you you don't have it. Don't let the devil trick you by saying, look at how you failed. Look at how you blew it. Look at how you're good for nothing. How dare you think you have a crown? How dare he think we don't? We have a crown because Jesus gave us his crown. We're he we're the kings. We're kings in Christ. He's the king of kings. If he's the king of kings, that means he's got to have some kings that he's the king of. You and me are the kings that Jesus is the king of kings. Women, men, all, all boys and girls, we're all kings in Christ. You see, when God first created mankind, he made us to be victors. He made us to be champions. He calls us more than conquerors in Romans, chapter eight, verse thirty seven. He gives us a crown of glory, he gives us a crown of glory. Psalm 84, he says, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you would visit him for you have made him a little lower than Elohim. One translation says a little lower than the angels, but the actual translation is a little lower than Elohim. God has made us a little lower than himself. Jesus has seated us with him, though. And the scripture goes on to say you've been crowned. You have crowned him with glory and honor. God has crowned man, mankind with glory and honor. This crown that God gives us through Jesus Christ's blood. This crown represents your all access pass to victory, to your identity. You're a child of God to your royalty. You're a king in Christ to your dignity. You have been redeemed and you have been washed and you have been freed from your past and freed from whatever stole your dignity before. Now you have authority and now you have destiny. See, this crown represents all of these things. It represents your identity, your royalty, your dignity, your authority and your destiny. When we identify, when we realize Jesus has given us this crown and the devil's trying to get us to put it down. The devil's trying to get us to put it in the closet, put it down. You're not worthy of it yet. You don't deserve it yet. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It's not about what we deserve. It's about what Jesus deserves. And he gives us what he deserves rather than giving us what we deserve. And we should thank God. We should fall on our knees every day and thank him for that. Amen. This crown goes on the head. This is telling us something significant. Let no one take your crown. Where is the crown? You don't put your crown crown on your feet, put the crown on your head. This is telling us something significant. It's our head in our head. It's our brain. It's what we think and how we think. It controls the central nervous system of our lives. Our thinking needs to be permeated by this crown. Our thinking, your thinking needs to be permeated by this crown and what it represents. It's a mentality that should be the lens through which we rest all of our lives on and the lens through which we view all of life through this lens of this crown. A few years ago, I started saying this and I keep reminding myself of it. Hope it helps you too. royalty destroys inferiority. You know, we don't destroy inferiority through education. We don't destroy we, or we don't. Yes, we don't destroy inferiority through any anything man can do. We destroy inferiority in our lives by embracing God's royalty for our lives. He gives us royalty. He makes us a part of the royal family. <sighs> royalty is not just the opposite of inferiority. It's the cure to inferiority. <sighs> Boy, we could just go on and on. Eleanor Roosevelt said no one can make you feel inferior without your permission. Listen, what a powerful statement. Don't give the devil. Don't give others. Don't give yourself permission to make you feel inferiority. One of the words for believe in the Bible or to have faith, it's it means to permit something to be. Faith is really giving permission. 
we have authority to give permission to what we allow in our lives. If Jesus has given us this crown, why are we conquered? Why are we getting conquered? Well, because we're not taking our authority. Why are we getting conquered? Because we're not letting this concept, this royalty to permeate our head. In the same way that Jesus wore a crown of thorns, he gives us a crown of royalty. And because we won't let it permeate our brains and permeate our thinking, this is why we we fail so many times. This is why we feel defeated so many times. This crown needs to go on your head and permeate not just the top of your head, but go into your way of thinking and the way of looking at everything. Let's pray together. You ready to live from the throne? We already learned about living at the throne and now we're living from the throne from place of victory. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you've given us the victory. Thank you that you're for us, not against us. Thank you that we are now the head, not the tail. We're above only and not beneath. You've given us a crown to walk in victory, You've given us a crown of glory. And now I'm asking you, Jesus. Help this help each person, help, help every one of us connected here. That this royalty would permeate our thinking, permeate our head, permeate our perception of ourselves, permeate our problems, permeate our sense of identity, permeate our way of thinking about ourselves, about others and about our purpose in this life in Jesus name. Now, amen. If no, if anybody's watching connected here and you've never received Jesus, you've never been sure that you're going to heaven when you die. Why not accept the crown? He's trying to give you the crown of salvation. Pray this prayer out loud with me. Just say, Heavenly Father, pray that Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I receive the gift of salvation through the blood of Jesus. Just say that out loud. I receive the gift of salvation through the blood of Jesus. And now I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I am now a child of God in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you contact me today? Email us, connect with us, social media, whatever way you can do it. But when you do, make sure to download this book absolutely free. The power of a new life. Let me know you prayed that prayer and download this book. It's absolutely free. You can download it anywhere in the world. The power of a new life. These are the next steps in this journey with God. This is talks about the power of a new life, the power of the word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the church family. This will lay the foundations for your life to go forward and to build a permanent, firm foundation in preparation for you to live not only victorious in this life, but to live forever in eternity as well. Thanks for connecting with me here at Life Changers Church. I'm honored to be your pastor. If you haven't joined Life Changers Church, welcome to the family. And if you'd like to join, welcome to the family. Go to lifechangerschurch.com slash global and you can become a member of our church from wherever you live. You can start a life group, a watch party, whatever you'd like to do to bring more people into the family of God and more people into this spiritual home. Thank you again. I can't wait to see you at our next service. God bless.